Hi guys, hope you're all well. <clears throat> um, today um, we're going to talk about sanding and finishing your pieces. Or should I say sanding and finishing pieces the way I sand and finish pieces. Um, people have the, all different ways of doing it. This is just my way of doing it that I find most simple and effective. Um, we've been discussing it in a Facebook group and I just thought um, I would just make this video to show you what I do. So here I've got three pieces and as I say all the time, you know, the finish on this is a really good surface finish and that's because I buff and buff and buff and buff um, you know, put a piece of paper on and burnish it, sorry not buff, burnish the paper and get the surface as smooth as possible before it goes in the oven and that cuts your work down so much um, on your finished pieces so generally all I would have to do is just go around and make sure there's no little crummy bits from my cutters check my sides maybe and then give it um, a quick buff and a bit uh, a bit a quick polish uh, and a quick buff and it's you know super shiny and really nice I mean here's a, a finished piece that I did the other day uh, so um, all I'm going to do is using these as examples now this surface is a bit bumpy it was just some scraps uh, of one of the canes I've been playing with uh, not canes, blocks um, and I've left it not too well finished and these two are how I would normally have them finished um, and I'm just going to show you two different ways of sand and then I'm just going to actually varnish this one without doing anything just so you can um, have a you know have a judge so we'll start with this one and with this one I'm going to use nail files now I know that these numbers don't really correspond with European or American grits I don't think they do but ignore the numbers it's just this is a quite a rough one um, and I use this rough one for just going this hasn't actually got any on but I'll show you um, just for going around the edges like this taking off any little uh, bobbles or you know anything left from the uh, cutter um, sometimes you might have a bit of a sharp edge especially if you've used a metal cutter um, so I would go around with that to remove them and then all you really need is this one and they're just slightly rougher on each side and this one is a shiner and a buffer um, I will leave links for these guys um, these are from Aliexpress of course so all I'm going to do with this is just, this is all I do, circular and they don't kick up a lot of dust, these either guys, um, so that's good as well. And you can give these a wash, but all I do is, and I'm doing this real time guys, I'm not going to cut it or anything, I want you to see how quick I can get a decent finish on something. <clears throat> and all I do when I'm sanding you can feel it kind of drag if that's the right word and then all of a sudden while you're sanding it stops the drag and you can you can feel that change it's gliding over the piece more smoothly um, I'm just doing the sides guys I'll just give it one last go over to make sure I've got everywhere and then I change to the other side of my file which is just a little bit smoother and again I just keep feeling as I'm buffing 
and the drag just kind of stops it's it's hard to explain it but you'll know what I mean it you know it's obviously getting smoother isn't it you've got the previous ridges out so this is all I do and obviously some some pieces I want a really really shiny face on and I've just got a wet wipe I'm just gonna wipe the dust off guys um, some pieces I want a really lovely shiny finish on and some I, I quite like you know with just a matte finish and now I'll go in with this one which is the shiner and the buffer um, and then just do the same just go around the edges I mean, I've done this on a few videos that you see me do uh, with the nail files when something doesn't need a lot of finishing <clears throat> and then I, I just go over the surface till I feel that drag diminish and it is it's it's a weird thing to try and explain but you just you feel like it's not dragging anymore and it's just um, gliding over the surface <clears throat> and that's how I know um, that you know it's had enough really and unless you've got a particular divot in there that you're trying to get out uh, but if you've got quite a rough surface I would recommend you know using your normal sandpapers rather than um, the nail files the nail files are just a quick um, a quick fix if you like right so now I'm just gonna buff it and I don't know if you can t tell the surface is now quite a nice matte finish on it and now I'm just gonna buff it and I do this pretty quick because it does it quicker but if I just do half and show you then you can see the difference on the camera to the can you see that shine there so it, it's not a, a deep deep shine but it's a nice enough finish for some pieces and I stop this when that squeaking starts mainly because the squeaking's annoying Now for this piece I would probably uh, use my Dremel to finish it and get a higher shine on it um, but I just wanted to show you that you can get quite a decent shine just using these buffers and a couple of nail files so there we go it's not a massively deep shine but it's finished and it looks nice so that's just using the nail files and the other thing I use are these the like spongy pads uh, in the UK they're from uh, a company that does a lot of um, two-part resin called resin 8 um, and you get a medium grit a micro uh, the, I'll do them in the right order a fine grit a super fine grit and a micro fine grit now I, I will because this brand is quite popular uh, so I'll put the link to where I buy them from in the UK and I will try and find a link um, to where you might be able to buy them um, in other places that you know everybody should be able to get hold of them then but um, they're just it's like sandpaper on a um, or sand you know some people use sanding cloths don't they so um, yeah that's those I'm just put them back in order and I'm going to use these on this piece um, just to show you now this is quite a rough grit 
as similar as um, the nail file, hard nail file would be. And again, I just use this one for taking out lumps and bumps, uh, any bits along the edges that might be there. Um, this back's a bit bumpy, but um, I shan't worry about that now. So I just use this really tough grit one for cleaning it up a little bit. And then I just, now with the, these tend to take a bit more off. So I just wet the sponge um, or sometimes I get a bowl of water. It depends what mood I'm in. And then I just start with these. And this, when I say, um, I'll just pop off and give these a sand, guys. This is generally what I'm doing. And of course, uh, you could do this dry if you've got your mask on, guys. Um, I tend to do it, pop my mask on and do it dry if I'm filming. Because it, me doesn't, it means then I don't have to clean up too much mess when I come back to filming. And again, I just sand away, keep checking the surface. And I stop sanding when I stop feeling the drag on the surface. Or oh, the surface just looks better, if that makes sense. I just give it a wipe. I would normally dunk it in a bowl of water, guys. But again, with filming, it's easier just to do this with you guys. So that's just using the first one. And then the second one. And these are just, um, I don't know what the equivalent grit would be uh, in sandpaper. <clears throat> uh, but it, they're, they're in the fine end. What I like about this is it's quite cushiony for me with my hands and plus it'll bend nicely around the piece if that makes sense as well. And like I say, you could probably get these in some shape or form. These are actually sold for resin, um, finishing resin pieces off. But you could probably get these in some sort of shape or form um, from you know most places online but i will search for some links guys and then i go on to the micro fine spritz a bit of water on and then just keep sanding until i feel that um drag stop and then with this last one, I generally go in a, a little circle as well, just to make sure that I've not um, missed anywhere. And that is literally all I do, guys. And that is not a great amount of sanding, is it? Um, I'll just give this a clean up because it's a bit yucky and let's give it a dry on my tea towel, my scruffy old tea towels that I use in the studio and then I can either go in with my buffer or um, I can use my Dremel polishing pad, which I'm going to talk about in a second. Um, but I'll just give this a buff up with this so you can see the shine that you can just get with the buffer. Now I've only done that half, but you can see you get a lovely shine just using the buffer. 
Um, right, I'll now just um, using this. I've, I use three different types of heads uh, on my Dremel. Um, I've just got a new, a lovely new Dremel stand. Uh, a lovely friend bought it for me, and I'm so grateful because um, it is it really helps me um, with my hands so I can do it hands free now but I've got my snake attached at the minute just so I can show you guys these this is the one I use for polishing and buffing like the final step and it's um, it looks like a little puff ball doesn't it and once you've used them for a while I'll just lift my snake down um, they do start looking a bit tattier um, and these two now this is sold as a polisher and I still find this a bit rough uh, for polishing it is great if you've got a bit of a messy back or messy sides if you want to quickly get that off and so is this one again this one is not suitable too much for polishing but it is really great for um getting really rough bits off and i think most people have probably because this is a dremel branded one most people have seen these ones just cotton polishers um so they're the ones i'd use if i had a lot of stuff to take off but generally i just use these little puffball ones um and i'm gonna what I'll do is I'll turn the sound off um, of this portion of the video guys because it is a rather noisy um, so um, I'll just stop the video and restart it then I know which one I need to um, which portion I need to um, cut the sound out on but yeah with with my Dremel um, it's either uh, kept still so I can use two hands or I've got my snake and I just run this over which I'll do now and uh, I'll just take the sound off while I'm doing it but I'll do it in real time then you can see what I'm doing okay guys now I just did half of that because I just want you to see a difference so that's the half with the Dremel and I'll just bring my buffer back in and I'll do the other half with the buffer which is obviously a little bit more work but I just want you to see the the comparison of finish I know it's just they're still both glossy remember this is the this is the Dremel side 
they're still both glossy it's just this just has a slightly more of a sheen not a great difference um, I'll just get my denim I always have a, a scrap of denim I just find that it just gives it a nice final buff gets it rid of any particles that are on there but there you go guys you know you there isn't much difference between hand buffing and um, polishing with the Dremel just a little bit maybe but um, as finishes go that's a pretty decent finish um, and then what I thought I would show you is um, I've noticed on lots of people's um, videos uh, and information they start sanding um, a piece uh, and then they varnish it or they put um, UV resin on or normal resin on and I don't quite understand why people are doing that because you're putting all the hard work into buffing it but you're coating it and if you sand, I've said this before and I'll say it again, if you're sanding a table at home, uh, you know, you're putting a new coating on anything, you know, you're doing your painting, your woodwork, you sand away and make the surface a little bit rough so that your new surface that you're painting on, be it varnish or paint, will stick. Now granted, what you don't want is if you've got some massive divots in this, or a dirty great big thumbprint then no amount of varnishing is really going to get rid of it um, so what I'd advise you do is just go over the surface with a rough not a rough rough grit but say the first grit you would use if you were um, sanding uh, to bring it to a buff just to break the surface up a little bit and just to get rid of you know the odd fingerprint maybe or uh, similar so just give it a little going over clean it off now I like to use a bit of alcohol and um, this is just 90% um, alcohol that I buy from the chemist and I just like to spray a bit of alcohol on just to make sure that there is no, no greasy fingerprints or anything on that surface that will repel um, you know your UV resin or your um, varnish just let that evaporate off and then I get a nice fine brush I generally use a brush that I use for doing my uh, nails with uh, nails UV resin or resin in with <clears throat> and where's my water I'm just gonna this the lack of the uh, the varnish that I use is water based I always wet my brush with whatever's compatible so if I was using UV resin I would wet my brush with a little acetone or alcohol but I always wet my broth, brush because if you put a dry brush into something it introduces air and that's when you start getting a really crappy surface excuse my language so over here I've just got some Cernit Glossy uh, it's I, oh, which I've just spilled on my worktop <clears throat> and this is what I prefer to use um, I'm just getting a little stand guys Um, I just like this brand uh, whatever varnish you're using um, you know be it very thin or Sculpey or whatever um, and just a nice I'm just picking the bit that I spilled off or spilled on my desk just a nice thin coat initially just make sure that your surface has had one lovely 
thin, fine court. And let it dry. Just double checking that there's nothing. I've got a bit of uh, cat fluff floating around, so I'm just tipping it into the light and checking that there is uh, nothing untoward. Um, and I'm just going to sit that to one side and let it dry. Give my brush a rinse. Um, Cernit recommends that you, um, this one, uh, recommend you, you wait an hour between coats. I never wait an hour as if it feels dry it gets another coat and then this one you bake off um, for a little bit in the oven uh, but it you know it doesn't matter which surface um, which product you're using guys this will work for any of your uh, varnishes and such uh, but yeah get that one thin coat down first um, them I've lots of people um, have done um, a re reviews on this and say that it pulls away from the edges um, and it doesn't go on smooth but I've never had any issues with it but maybe that's because I'm not buffing it before I do it I'm actually making the surface suitable to take it I don't know um, like I say I'm a stickler for breaking the rules really and trying my own thing um, so maybe it's just me being awkward uh, right I'm gonna let that dry a sec guys I shall come back shortly uh, and um, we'll put another coat on um, I know it's a, it's a bit of a pest waiting for it, but it's already drying now, I can see it. Uh, we'll put another coat on and then I'll just chat about um, what we've done um, so that you, you're all getting where I'm coming from. So I'll just see you in a minute. Hi guys, that initial coat's uh, finished now, so I'll just put another coat on, just a little bit thicker this time. Again, I'm just going to wet my brush because it has dried out a little bit while I've been waiting. Just make sure it's damp so that it's not trapping any air. And I'm just going to do it a little bit thicker this time. And some, I mean, you're never going to get rid of all of your brush marks, guys. I think it's just the nature of brushing something on. Um, you know, if you use UV resin it and you warm the surface, it um, flattens itself out, doesn't it? You can't really do that with... Uh, hand painted varnishes I don't think uh, some people use a sponge don't they but I find uh, it can form up um, form up form up what form up whatever medium uh, you're painting on it's got a couple of little bubbles just blowing to pop them um, yeah so you know it's um, I suppose it's you know I think personally um, I use varnish if I've made a piece that has I want to have like half and half like a matte finish and a shiny finish or maybe I've done um, some uh, gilding flakes on half of something then I may go over that half with varnish to make sure that the gilding flakes are stuck I don't use a great deal of surface stuff mainly because I've obviously I've got my Dremel haven't I so that I can um, I can uh, use my Dremel to 
you know get a, a decent buff on it um, but yeah I mean this isn't quite dry obviously but you know that's got a lovely glossy sheen on now um, there is a couple of little speckles on the surface that I can see um, it's probably dust in the air in here but it's got a reasonable finish on it um, this was um, wet sanded and then buffed with the Dremel uh, so just using my sanding pads and then buffing with the Dremel uh, and then this one was half with the Dremel half with the hand buffer um, and then this was just buffed to a soft sheen um, just using um, the minimal amount of effort which was just this wasn't it um, oh I'm just going to give it see if I can get this a bit more shiny yeah can you see just a bit more effort and you get you know you get a bit more shiny uh, some people add a little bit of um, wax finish on I know Samantha Burrells is a big fan of this stuff I like using this stuff on copper because it stops it tarnishing uh, I have used it a little bit on um, in fact let's put a bit on this hand buffed piece uh, I'll just do this half here just using my finger and we'll see you know if there is a difference uh, we'll just let that dry a second um, there's lots of different things out there that people use uh, you've just got to find your own I suppose haven't you that you like using um, I think people uh, Verithane is one of them isn't it it's just a water soluble um, varnish a general use varnish uh, some people like the golden varnish don't they which I've never I've never used it um, with Paul McClare but I have used it in mixed media um, so it's uh, swings and roundabouts about your you know types of finishing but um, let's just give this a buff while and you can see this is the half that I put it on and that just gives a lovely finish as well what I like about the Renaissance is it uh, stops fingerprints as well doesn't it um, so yeah guys uh, just my quick way of uh, varnishing you know get yourself some of these I'll leave a link put them in the oven as smooth as you possibly can and then you know you've got less work when they come out haven't you I mean a lot of my black ones I like to just leave matte I like the finish um, so try a few different things see what you like um, but um, just with a couple of nail files you can get a pretty decent um, surface um, more of a satin finish with the nail file whereas with the Dremel of course you get a, a bit more of a gloss don't you because it's just polishing it as well uh, but I hope that was useful for you all um, I keep I've <laughs> I keep forgetting that I've had a little move around that's you can see my light up here because we've moved my light so that I could uh, bring my desk closer to me while I was working uh, my desktop anyway shut up I'm babbling uh, but yeah so that's just a standard glossy varnish that one was finished with the Dremel that was half Dremel half hand pot buffing and that was hand buffing with a little bit of Renaissance wax on uh, I hope you found that useful guys um, and I shall see you all in the next video bye now